Welcome to the Off the Charts Football Podcast. I'm Matt Manicharian, former NFL scout and currently of Sports Info Solutions, joined by John Barrows today. John is the injury expert here at SIS. As many people know, we have the most thorough injury collection operation, injury data collection operation, injury analysis operation on the planet as it pertains to football, both NFL and college football. And John is the guy at the helm of the entire operation, kind of overseeing all of the, the medical aspects of the collection operation, you know, relative, you know, not the data necessarily um, per se, but rather as, as being the guy who's A, auditing everything that's going on, B, uh, creating the, the infrastructure that we really have as it relates to our whole injury operation and kind of overseeing everything about it. That is John Barrow. So John, we're excited to have you on and welcome. Thanks for having me, Matt. Uh, I'm excited. And uh, let's get to uh, talking about some NFL injuries that are going to affect this upcoming 2019 season, whether it pertains to fantasy football or if it's just the on the field impacting the, uh, the team's decisions of uh, what we're going to be doing. Yeah, man. And I, I'm excited to have you on. And I think uh, our listeners will be excited to get a little bit of this fantasy sort of advice, um, learning what they can expect, what to make of some of these injuries that we saw last year and these injury situations and what direction we can expect them to go in this year. So we got to start off right away with the quarterbacks. Um, quarterbacks is always where it's at. Um, and that's always going to be where we start any conversation. So um, what can you tell us, you know, overall about the big quarterback issues going around the league. Where do you want to start here in terms of the quarterback discussion? Well, since we're here in Pennsylvania, we might as well start off with a little Carson Wentz. Um, now, Carson is dealing with a spinal compression fracture. Uh, he did not require surgery. Um, so so how, does that, how does that just taking a step back because you're, you're too advanced for me already. He's got that spinal injury. This is a separate injury from what caused him to miss time. Uh, in the past, does this have anything to do with the ACL tears and things like that, or this is just totally um, a separate situation? From what I from what I know, I would say these are totally separate situations. Yes, he did rush back from his ACL and LCL tear um, from uh, two years ago, uh, but I don't think these are related. Now, actually, on the medical reports for Carson coming out of college at the combine. Um, there was already some background with Carson on having this type of uh, compression fracture. Um, now, in college, I, I never saw the injury, so I don't know exactly if it was an acute injury, meaning if it just happened all in one play, or if it was over time. Um, and now with this compression fracture that he has currently, uh, I believe that's what it's related to. I don't know if it's the exact same spot, because they'll never tell us that, but um, I would venture out to say that he has a compression fracture in the lumbar spine, meaning the lower back. Um, they said it would take three months to heal. Uh, obviously, he sat out the rest of the season, but I have full confidence in Carson um, returning to what he was before he tore his ACL. I believe he rushed back from that, and he had to change up his style a little bit, and he wasn't quite ready. But obviously, the Eagles have full confidence in him, too, because they gave him that massive extension. Okay, and so the concern level, one being low concern, two, medium concern, or three, a high concern. Where does this one fall for you? I just, that's a one for me. I'm, uh, I'm not really concerned about Carson at all. Full confidence in him. Um, and someone who's dealing with something similar to that is a guy like Matt Stafford. And we didn't hear about this until after the season that he was also dealing with a fractured spine. Now, we don't know what kind of fracture it was. There's no specifics, but he was able to play through it, and he's also on that category of guys that I'm just not concerned about. I think he'll be able to return without surgery and come back to full play. I'm interested to hear you say that because I, I, th I was probably a little more scared of the back injuries, just what I know about them in general, what I know about, you know, you see an offensive tackle get a back injury. You always kind of think that that's a – it's something that's gonna you're gonna see again, and I know for for my sign of aging myself, I had my own little back injury a couple of weeks ago um, to my lumbar spine, as you call it, and um, man, it was painful. I didn't have any fractures or anything like that, but to learn about what that pain is like, um, but I think as as I get a couple of weeks removed from it, and I find that my mobility is good and all that kind of stuff, um, the pain is still there a bit, and I think that it seems like it's got to be something that's gonna linger with these back injuries, no? Okay, so yes, you're right in that they're the exact same area that you had, but these are different injuries, whereas these two players are dealing with spinal fractures, 
you were dealing with more of a herniated or bulging disc with just a spinal fracture. And in the case of like- You say Matt, just a fracture? Just, just a, a spinal fracture? So just a, <laughs> so it's just a spinal fracture. And I only say just because I'm assuming these are small fractures, especially in the case where Stafford is playing through this injury. Um, and your injury was much more severe in that it could not only occur again, but it could also shoot through the uh, the nerves which go down your legs, which I'm sure you experience. Yeah, nobody's playing through. Nobody's playing through that. And if you are, you're you're a lunatic. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's interesting. So that's good news there for the Eagles and for the Lions and for those, those fantasy owners there. Uh, I think Wentz could certainly be an interesting play depending on what that offense looks like that, this year and how much they kind of look into that, that, that run-pass balance. One thing while we're on the subject of quarterbacks that I think about, I know we looked into this a little while ago, was we all make a lot of about quarterbacks getting hit and how many hits they take and how likely they are to get injured. Obviously, we care about this with Kyler Murray, with people like a Carson Wentz. Um, one thing that's interesting in the research that we looked at, because comparing the injury research with the play-by-play -play data that our video scouts are charting, is that quarterbacks, when they're hit while throwing, or when they're, when they're hit while they're looking to throw, there's much more of a greater chance of injury than when they're ball carriers. So a, a quarterback taking a hit as he's on a designed run, or even if he's on a scramble and he's already committed to running the ball, is much more likely to result in a major injury than a, a blindside hit, kind of hit while you're throwing as a quarterback. Uh, I was fascinated to look at those numbers and how stark they were based on our own data, but there's something about that that makes sense to me because of just how, how unprotected you are with your arm up in the air in an unnatural position um, versus, you know, usually if you're calling a quarterback run, you're not calling it with with a, a little guy that can't take that pain. Even if he is fast, you're calling the quarterback runs for somebody like a Cam Newton, a Josh Allen. Yeah, so that's not surprising to me either. I mean, uh, if you're getting blindsided, you're unprepared for a hit coming and you have your arm up in the air and someone's trying to rip the ball out or literally just rip your arm away from your body. I mean, yeah, your chances of getting injured have to go up um, as opposed to when you have a designed run and – uh, you're prepared to take these hits. These guys are professionals. I mean, uh, you're practicing how to get hit. I mean, that's, that's your job. All right, interesting stuff there. Let's stay with quarterbacks a little bit. Tell me about Marcus Mariota. There's a guy who's had a lot of injury issues in the past, and now he's got a backup who kind of looks like if Marcus Mariota were to look in the mirror, uh, the quarterback mirror, he's kind of a, a similar guy to Ryan Tannehill. But what do you expect injury-wise from Mariota this year? Yeah, so I'm worried for Marcus this year. Um, so in 2018, he missed two starts with a brachial plexus injury, also known as like a stinger or a burner. And he also missed one start with an ulnar nerve injury. Um, so Ulnar nerve being in your arm? Being in his elbow. So he had like an elbow nerve injury. That's like your funny bone. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can say your funny bone or something similar to that feeling when you get that funny bone knocked. Right. Um, so typically like 95% of these injuries go with, go away within like seconds or minutes, but uh, he had reoccurring injuries and symptoms with these injuries. So it's a little worrisome uh, for the future again, going into this season. I mean, these, these injuries to your brachial plexus, which is in between like your neck and shoulder, these nerves run down through your arm, through your elbow, to your hands. And for a quarterback, that's gotta be pretty debilitating. And you, I mean, he wasn't able to start because of this, which is something that usually takes seconds to go away, meaning that this was some serious nerve damage going on. And, yeah, like you said, I think Ryan Tannehill, though he also has his own pass with getting injured, I mean, there's a reason why they signed him. I don't know if they have a ton of confidence in Marcus going into this season. Um, now, this offseason in April, Marcus had said that he gained 10 pounds by what he said, eating more pasta before bed. And – he wanted to just absorb the hits, and he says, I feel good running around, and that's kind of been my main concern with my new weight, and it's also concerning for myself. Uh, adding 10 pounds by eating pasta before bed kind of sounds a little curious to me. Uh, I don't know if this is good weight or bad weight that he's putting on. Oh, I do. I've done this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, Marcus missed one game in 2017 with a hamstring strain, and it sounds like that's what he might be concerned of is – with this extra weight putting on, it might slow him down and maybe increase his risk of muscle strains. I know, I know you have your own history of those, those hamstrings, so you're always on the lookout for that. All right, so Wentz and Stafford were at that level one, not very concerned 
Where does that leave us for Mariota? That's a, I'm maxed out with him. That's a three. I'm really concerned for his future. All right. Moving forward, Cam Newton of the Panthers. Uh, we talked to Scott Spratt last week. We should say last week. It, technically, that was yesterday. We're here recording this on July 12th. It'll get posted on the 18th. But um, last week, for the purposes of um, when people will be hearing this, we, we talked to Scott Spratt, and we talked about Cam Newton, and he really said the health of Cam Newton is going to be a big a big dictator on what the Panthers do this year. What can we expect from the health there? Yeah, so Cam's got that shoulder injury that's been nagging him for the last two years. He underwent rotator cuff surgery in March of 2017, um, and then again this past offseason underwent surgery. Um, now, this time around, the surgery was less um, invasive and less severe. Uh, based off of what the surgeon said himself was that the cartilage damage was not as extensive as we feared. And that makes me think that this was more of a debridement surgery, which is basically just going in and fingers crossed that he wasn't just loosely speaking of the labrum being repaired. But if it's just the cartilage that's covering the bones, the bony structures of the shoulder, and he just had to remove some of the pieces that have been frayed, that makes me feel good about Cam's future. Now, the cartilage issue itself is a long-term concern for things like arthritis, maybe years to come. So his long-term or his longevity may be uh, a little questionable. But in the short term, I have a little bit of confidence for Cam going into the season. You were speaking of that scale of one to three where a one is not worried and the three is extremely worried. He's right in the middle for me. He's a two. Um, I think he should be ready to go. He should be able to start week one for the Panthers in the 2019 season. Um, and I expect the shoulder to have a little bit of an effect, but not nearly as bad as what we saw last year. I mean, the guy could barely get his arm above his shoulder. I mean, yeah, you showed me some nasty looking film of that. Um, you, John, it might not, as he's our injury expert, he's reviewing all the film for any of these injured players, any of the injury events that are happening going on there. And it, when it really came towards the end of the season, it, it was a Cam Newton that was really not Cam Newton throwing the football. That was a different guy. It reminded me of Andrew Luck. If you had looked at Andrew Luck throwing the ball two years ago, some of the stuff that he was doing, just not looking like 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 an athlete while he's throwing the football, seeing him use his body and trying to kind of jerk things in different in different ways to get it out. And I know he was having that shoulder issue people were worried about. How does Cam Newton heading into this year compare to, to where we were at with Andrew Luck heading into last year? Right. So uh, we had some details of Andrew Luck's injury when that was all happening, and that was a tear of the labrum which is going to be a much more invasive surgery, not in the sense that he has a bigger scar or anything, but that they had to go in and literally repair the uh, labrum instead of what happened to Kim, which is they most likely just went in and were able to scrape away or remove some of the cartilage that was uh, messing with him. I don't think this is as severe as Andrew Luck's um, situation that this he is had. Just, this is just basically the ball and socket, and in this case, the socket is kind of jagged around the edges, has some damage that needs to get cleaned out. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly it. And uh, whereas when Andrew was going into the 2018 season, I was really concerned um, for him, and I believe in 2017 he we thought he was going to play, but then he ended up sitting out for the majority of the season, if not the whole season. Right. Correct? Yep. He was out. So. Yeah, I, I expect Cam to, to not miss a, a game this year. I expect him to, to be back and be the Cam that we know. That's good. So moderate concern with a two there, but the prognosis is better than that of luck at this year last time. I think that's helpful for people that, that maybe don't have the, the view of things as closely as you do. All right, one more quarterback I want to get to on the list. Guy who obviously missed the season last year with an injury for the 49ers, Jimmy Garoppolo. What do you see from Jimmy G? Yeah, Jimmy tore his ACL, um, trying to make a little juke move going to the outside early in the season last year. I have no concerns about Jimmy coming back fully healthy. Uh, early season ACL, 2019, we're okay. I think we're okay. Yeah. And it's just an ACL, no MCL, PCL, anything well, else? Well, you, typically the, the unhappy triad, they call it, um, involves the MCL as well as either the lateral or medial meniscus, uh, typically the medial side. But uh, – I believe that the MCL was a, was a sprain and, and the, the surgery that he had for the ACL, they can all go in at the same time and clean all that up. And at this point, um, the average return to play is, is uh, eight to 10 months. And I, I see no reason why Jimmy can't come back and be uh, fully healthy for the 2019 season. 
All right. From the most important position to the position that can't get any love these days, let's talk about running backs. Um, some big running back injuries last year, a really confusing end towards the last season with Todd Gurley. Um, and then, of course, his opponent in the Super Bowl, Sonny Michel, was a guy who really turned it up towards the end of the year, seemed to earn his money. But now back in the, in the injury issues camp, what can we expect from either of these two guys who if healthy, I think, would be you know, first round type running backs in, in most fantasy drafts, but certainly no, no expectation of health here. And, and Sonny Michel, the value's got to be dropped off even more with nobody really even knowing what to expect from him, right? Right. So, yeah, these are two play- players that I'm really concerned about going into this season. I want to talk about how these players' history of an ACL tear from years ago is impacting them today. Uh, now, Todd Gurley and Sonny Michel are both dealing with arthritis, and it seems like these are issues that stem from, for Gurley, 2014 when he uh, tore his ACL against Auburn. And Sony Michel, when he tore his ACL as a high school sophomore in 2011, it's crazy to think that eight years later we can be talking about the side effects of this ACL tear. But it, from my experience, this is what is exactly impacting him today. Um, this is what you'd expect. So you're less concerned one year after the ACL, mm-hmm. but 10 years after the ACL, if you've been playing running back all that time, we, we can expect that it's going to be painful. That's correct. Yeah. Um, so – when I spoke about the unhappy triad a minute ago, um, the meniscus typically tears along with the ACL and the MCL when you have a non-contact ACL tear. And the meniscus is similar to the labrum in the shoulder in that it's something where your tibia or like your shin bone and your femur, your thigh bone, are able to, to have like a shock absorber in between them so that all this force that you're putting on your knees isn't just going to rip against your bones. Um, And when that tears, they typically have to remove the torn part or else it's similar to Cam Newton's shoulder where it's really impacting him every every time he tries to use his shoulder. So they remove the meniscus. And then years later, since this meniscus is removed, these bones have been rubbing on the cartilage that just covers the bones. And this cartilage starts wearing away and this bone on bone really starts to um, create some joint inflammation, which is the definition for arthritis. So now we're dealing with arthritis for these two players years later because of this meniscus removal. And uh, for Sonny Michel, I mean, I believe before the 2018 season, so his rookie season in August, he had to have fluid drained from his knee. I mean, that's just one of the side effects of having this type of damage in your knee, this arthritis. I mean, uh, so so these are both young players, especially in the case of Michel. I don't think we expect their careers to be over, um, but certainly this is the way you're talking about this. It sounds like a a degenerative thing where it's going to shorten their career. So let's take them one at a time. Todd Gurley, we expect probably more of a a balanced workload kind of thing, more of a back by committee, less reliance on him being the 20 touch a game plus guy. Um, Is that what you expect there? Yeah, I, I would, I would think that would be the case if the Rams are trying to conserve him, especially since they're trying to go on another playoff run going into the season. Um, it could be a week by week thing where some weeks he gets 20 plus carries and some weeks it's just 10 to 15 carries that you might just want to limit him. It might be game flow. Right. It might just be how he's feeling. It might that be week. pain. The pain might be. Exactly. Yep. Um, that makes sense. It seems like I bet if they could have last year back, they would have gone less. Uh, reliant on him weeks one through 13 or whatever it was right instead of having to leave him out there and then never have him totally back right again that'll be interesting um what about sony michelle is it kind of a similar thing it's week to week we got to see how it's going to go is there actually like a a a risk of re-injury is there is there a risk with one of these two guys that they actually like do something new that's going to really mess them up and cause them to miss the season or is it mostly like we're dealing with something that's going to be painful one way or another that they're just going to have to be dealing with and managing so from what I know, it's more of just management, pain management, uh, try and limit the amount of swelling that's happening in the knee. Now, it is known that swelling in your knee um, does put the ligaments and the structure of your knee at further risk. It's putting more pressure on your ligaments. It's putting more pressure on the tendons that are coming through. So in that aspect, yes, when the knee is inflamed and swollen, there is an increased risk. But like you saw with Sony before the 2018 season, if there is fluid in that knee and there is increased inflammation, they're going to do something about it. Interesting stuff. 
Um, at end of the day, are those are those guys both number three on your on your risk scale? I'm worried about these two players going into the 2019 season. Okay, buyer beware for your fantasy draft. Um, looking around, a couple other running backs. Uh, Devontae Freeman, what's going on with him? Yeah, so Devontae has been banged up the last couple seasons, it seemed. So last year he uh, missed a game with a bruised foot, and then when he came back, he actually tore his groin up near his hips. Um, they call it a sports hernia. It requires surgery. It ended his season, and uh, it's a little worrisome going into the 2019 season due to, I mean, this guy's had three documented concussions um, since 2015, his most recent being 2017. Um, he's had a full year to recover from this surgery. He's had a full year to get ready for 2019. I'm a little worried for him. Uh, he'd be more of a two on my scale. Yeah. Tough one there. Um, one more. Hopefully we can add on a, end on a, a little bit of a more lighter note with the, the running backs. One other guy, Jarek McKinnon. We talked about Jimmy Garoppolo before coming off the ACL. His running back, Jarek McKinnon. Good news there? Yeah, good news. I mean, it's a bummer for him that he never really got to have his moment shining with the Niners in his first season there. He tore his ACL. Um, in the immediate future, I, I fully expect Jarek to be uh, ready to rock for the Niners this season. Um, long term, uh, we're talking about maybe some arthritis years down the road. I mean, Sonny Michel, we're talking about his sophomore year of high school, 2011, that, and this is eight years later. So for, for Jarek in the immediate future, no real concerns. All right. So Niners, you don't got to worry about your quarterback and your running back being injured. You just got to be worried about them being good at football. <laughs> um, that's a better, that's a better problem to face. You can't do, you can't do that one without having the first one taken care of. Very true. Let's look around at some pass catchers. All right, moving to the wide receiver position. First up on our list is Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, so both of these players, unfortunately, tore their Achilles um, in December of 2018, and they both underwent surgery in the same that's, month. That's the Durant injury. That's, that's correct. The dreaded Achilles. Yes, it is, and, and it's, not a lig it's not a ligament. It's a tendon, so it's the calf muscles um, insertion into – your heel and the return to play average is about 11 months. Um, and actually a study done in 2018 of 95 NFL players showed that it was a career ending injury for nearly 28% of those analyzed. So this is a rough injury. I, I would group this in with the patellar tendon rupture as one of the two worst injuries that you can possibly have, um, in the NFL. It's a rough recovery. Um, I'm worried about these two players going into their into their seasons. I would expect these two players to start the year on the pup. Now, I've been listening to Emmanuel Sanders talk about his rehab, and he is trying some, uh, I don't want to say experimental, but some new rehab techniques which um, restrict the blood flow into your legs. And he said that he's added eight pounds of muscle into just his legs this offseason. So he's trying some new things. Coming By back restricting in, blood flow? Yeah, so he's um, – they call it BFR, so uh, blood, flow, blood flow restriction. Uh, they're literally limiting the amount of blood that is able to flow through the legs. And the theory with that is you don't need to put as much um, stress on your legs when you work out and get the same amount of um, that feeling of you've worked out in, the, in your legs. And uh, – oh. Yeah, so you get um, fatigued faster by limiting the blood flow, but they are seeing, I mean, he's seeing good results. He said he's gained eight pounds of muscle while recovering from an Achilles tendon rupture, which is, I mean, that's rare to say that you're you're coming out stronger from it. But I can't decide if it sounds dangerous or if it reminds me of a, it's just like the Kobe Bryant, like the blood spinning stuff he was doing in Germany or whatever. Hey, I'm not going to lie to you if I didn't say it's a little bit freaky to hear about because um, it is. It's kind of weird, um, especially when you see someone doing it. You see their veins popping out while they're working out. It's kind of weird. But, uh, I mean, hey, you got to try everything, especially when 28% of uh, NFL players end their career because of this injury. I mean, you got to do something. Should, uh, is there any reason to think that that 28% with 2019 medicine, it, it might be closer to 40% or 50% that, or, or rather lower, they said 28% end their career. Maybe it's actually only 20% or 15% because uh, the medical technology when those injuries happen isn't where it is today. So you, I, I would like to think of that as at least kind of the worst case 
number for, for quantifying this. It's got to be at least better than that on, to some degree. Yeah, I would, I would assume as time goes on that that number will get better for these NFL players. With my physical therapy background, I know that every year there's new techniques, new therapies that are coming out that p- people are trying and having more success with. ACL tears 10, 15 years ago, you would never hear of a guy coming back after nine months and being just as strong. So, hey, here we are today, and, and we're trying something new with Emmanuel Sanders. So, yeah, maybe that number goes down in the future. So on the one to three scale, Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders sound like they're about four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty worried for them. And, I, again, I would expect them to, to start the year on the pup list. And if they don't, hey, uh, good luck to them. All right, one more wide receiver to talk about. One of my favorite on-off on all stars, and and what I mean by an on-off all star is uh, just like Earl Thomas. For years and years, you could look at the Seahawks' defensive statistics and slice and dice it every different way, and just see when he was on the field how much of a better defense and team that they were versus when he was not on the field. Cooper Cup last year for the Rams, it was a tale of two offenses. I think that uh, most people that really study this. Um, there are a lot of people that could point at Todd Gurley as being a part of that, but it's really the Cooper Cup, the difference there. Um, him just being a safety blanket, knowing where to be against zone, him being somebody that can beat man, the one-on-one, somebody that can block. So all of that bunch stuff that the Rams were doing when they were lining up bunch formations close to the offensive line, he's a, a key blocker on, on the force player from the secondary in a lot of those situations. So Cooper Cup, I think, is somebody who it's easy to not be enamored by his physical ability. I was too low on him coming out of college, and, and Dan Fornbach will remind me of that at least once a month. But um, he's a great player, and that injury, I think, was was one of the biggest things that happened to the Rams last year. What do we expect from him? Yeah, so uh, with Cooper, I mean – This is a guy who experienced a concussion in the beginning of the season, and then he had that MCL sprain, and then four weeks later he had that – or three weeks later he had that ACL tear. So it was kind of just a series of events that were just unfortunate, and he was kind of trying to tough it out and, you know, be a – pretty NFL player and that's something we've looked at though too is that those the concussions that sometimes when players get concussions there can be kind of lingering effects to that where they can they can be more likely for them to have muscular injuries after that yeah so in other sports such as rugby there have been studies that come out and say that you're at a higher risk of re-injury within 12 months of having a concussion for any type of musculoskeletal injury meaning whether it's muscles or or bones or ligaments, you have a higher risk of injury. Um, now that makes there, sense to me. When I got concussed in high school, I came back and I was a step slow. Yep. Things weren't happening to me at the usual speed, and I could see how that could happen. Yeah, it, it might have played a, uh, a, a part in Cooper Cup's injury. But, uh, yeah, I, I expect Cooper to come back in the 2019 season and, and be the same guy that we saw. That's good to hear. So throw him, throw him in with those other guys that had the ACLs, the Jimmy Garoppolo, the Jarek McKinnon. This is a standard ACL injury. Happened long enough ago. What was it week nine ish? Something like that. Something like that. That uh, we, that he should be okay to to be back for this year. All right, let's round out and talk about a couple of tight ends. First up, Delaney Walker. What can you tell me there? Yeah. So Delaney had that nasty uh, that fibula fracture, that ankle fracture, as well as a dislocation of his ankle. It required surgery in September of 2018, um, and from what I've been seeing, he's been taking his time with the rehab, making sure he goes through all the steps. So where ankle dislocations have been reported to occur in 21% of ankle fractures, and there's typically with that ligament damage, so it's more severe than simply a fibula or tibia fracture, uh, I see a little reason to worry with Delaney going into the season. He might start on the pup. He's not a young cat anymore, Mm -hmm. um, which may also um, decrease his chances of playing week one. But uh, I see no reason why to believe uh, Delaney can't come back when he does come back. I'm not concerned about him uh, coming back and having a, uh, a poor performance. He just may start on the pup is all. I've seen too many of those those nasty looking injuries, and hopefully Delaney Walker has dealt with injuries throughout his career. Hopefully he can make it back, um, and and because when he's on the field, he's always been productive. All right, last up, one more tight end. What can you tell me about Hunter Henry? Yeah, so Hunter's another guy who tore his ACL, and 
Hunter actually attempted to come back the same season that he tore his ACL because it happened in the uh, in the off season before the year even started. So, I mean, the guy was ready to rock in his own mind uh, before the season even ended. So I see no reason why he wouldn't be ready to roll for 2019. I'm I'm uh, I'm excited to see what Hunter comes back and does. I like that. We ended every position on a little positive note there. Of course, got Finding to. a guy that you're feeling good about, the, the old number one on the scale. Yep. All right, John. Well, I've appreciated you having you having you on. This was a lot of fun, really interesting conversation, and hopefully all, all the fantasy players out there can get a couple of good tidbits in there that can help them win their fantasy leagues this season. Um, we will definitely have to have you back on throughout the season. We've talked about it before, but now we're actually, I think, in a better place to, to do that this year. So we'll bring you on throughout the year, have some updates. As always, when you have interesting tidbits, I'll report them to the people. But uh, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Hey, I'd love to do it during the year and uh, happy to happy to do it. And thanks for having me on. All right. Well, on that note, we will sign off. Please help spread the word about the Off the Charts football podcast by recommending us to your football-loving friends. We are a word-of-mouth operation here. This is niche content, people. So you got to tell the people that you know that need to be listening to this stuff. I'm sure you people know who those, who those people are in your life. Um, as always, you can find us on Twitter at SportsInfo underscore SIS. I'm at Matt Mano. And uh, you can find Aaron at F-O underscore A shots. John, what's, what's your uh, Twitter handle? That's a great question. Uh, I believe it's at Veros John. It is at Veros John. I may, uh, <laughs> I might be difficult to find. I have 70 followers. Holler, but, uh, yeah. He's a worthwhile follower. Pretty much anytime I see anybody get injured in any sort of sporting event, I immediately tweet at John for his, for his diagnosis. So um, you can look out for Veros John there. That's at V-E-R-R-O-S-J-O-H-N, at Veros John. For Aaron Schatz, I'm Matt Manicharian, and thank you for listening to the latest episode of the Off the Charts Football Podcast. Podcast.